All right. Today, we're going to be exploring Google AI Studio and what they can do in terms of in interpreting screen events and working with users. So right now, we're in BureauWorks, and let's go here to the home screen, and let's turn on the sharing screen. I'm in Google AI Studio right now, and I'm going to share this specific screen. And actually, I'm going to screen, and I'm going to share this specific screen. And now the stream is live. Now, let's say, for instance, I want to ask Google a question and I want to say a here, let's open the translation editor and let's look at this example project here in Portuguese as an example. And let's ask Google, hey, Google, what, what am I looking at? Okay. The video shows the user sharing their screen. They first show Google AI Studio, then go into an online platform for translation projects. They navigate to a specific translation project, open the translation editor, and then ask Google, what am I looking at? Is there anything else I can help you with? That's super cool. I also want to understand, can you tell the languages that I'm translating from and into? Sure, the language you are translating from is English and the language you are translating into is Portuguese. Can I help with anything else? No, oh, that's great. I also see on my screen a green thing on the right, a blue thing that's underneath it, and yellow things as well. Can you make a best attempt of describing what these things are? Certainly. The green element on the right appears to be a translation suggestion that's been evaluated and given a 100% score. Below that, there's a blue element showing another translation suggestion, and then a couple of yellow elements that also seem to be translation suggestions. Is there anything else I can help you with? Oh, that's great. Now, if we look, take a look at the translations too, I'm seeing something called smells. And when I click on it, I see translation accuracy and I see a few comments on the translation. Would you care to suggest what that, what that refers to? Sure. The smells and translation accuracy information you see there indicates that there might be potential problems or inaccuracies with the translation. It seems like the system is flagging some areas for closer review. Is there anything else I can help you with? Yes, I'm going to do something here. I'm going to turn on something called web preview and I'm going to type in the website that I'm actually translating and I'm going to begin to render what these translations are actually looking like. Can you describe what this web preview functionality is doing and maybe describe maybe what you believe is the technology behind it? Certainly, the web preview functionality is showing you the translated text of the document on the actual website it is referencing. It allows you to see how your translated text will look in its real context. It seems like the technology behind this uses an API to render the live website with the translated text replacing the original content. Is there anything else I can assist with? Yeah, I also want to you to try to explain something to me. So I'm looking at the blue feed here that's saying in Portuguese, com a plataforma, but this translation suggests in Portuguese to me is coming to me as com o sistema. And I noticed that sistema is in my glossary as the word for platform. Do you have any idea of the mechanism that could be changing this blue feed with the glossary on just below it? Okay, it seems that the platform is using a glossary where the Portuguese word sistema is defined as the equivalent to the English word platform and it's using this glossary to make translation suggestions. Therefore, the platform suggests Sistema instead of Plataforma. It is not an automated change, but a suggestion the user has to manually approve. Is there anything else I can help you with? Yeah, I'm gonna show you something different here. I'm gonna show you this deck here. Let me find the right deck for you. And just a sec, bear with me. I want to find the exact deck. Okay, I'm gonna look at this deck and I'm gonna explain the framework that we're using for something called context sensitivity. Can you describe what you see in this image for me? Sure, I see that the screen shows a diagram titled Context Sensitivity Under the Hood. It's depicting a process with various steps involving users, an API, a RAGI translator, and LLMs. There is also a knowledge base at the bottom of the diagram, so given this diagram, okay, so I want you to keep it in mind and I want to show you something in the editor and I want to see if you can, if you can reconcile these two things. 
So this is the mechanism that I showed you that was context sensitive. So if I change here right now, the, on the right, what I see here is my knowledge base, the machine translation in blue coming from DeepL, the glossaries in yellow. Now let's say for instance, I change this and I change the glossary from uh, platform, from Sistema, and I say that this should be Plataforma. And I'm gonna make this change in the glossary and I'm gonna confirm that change. And now if I context sensitive translate this again, it's going to change the feed from com sistema to com a plataforma de tradução. Can you explain what just happened in light of that previous slide I was showing you? Sure. You first showed a diagram of context sensitivity under the hood, depicting a process involving users, an API, a RAG translator, and LLMs. You then showed a translation editor, where the right sidebar showed a knowledge base section, including machine translations in blue and a glossary in yellow. Then, you change the term for platform in the glossary from Sistema to Plataforma, and the context-sensitive translation updated from Com o Sistema de Traducao to Com a Plataforma de Traducao to reflect that change. Is there anything else I can assist you with? Yeah, can you explain why that change took place in terms of the diagram that I explained? There was a RAG translation engine that was looking at, the, at this different knowledge-based suggestions, why was the change implemented being that there are some things that are saying in the glossary that don't coincide with the machine translation? Why would you say that certain things took precedence over other things? Sure, the RAG translation engine uses different knowledge sources. In the translation editor, the glossary has precedence over machine translation. So when you updated the glossary term for platform, it was used by the RAG engine for context-sensitive translation, overriding the prior machine translation. Did this help explain that behavior? It did. Do you understand exactly what a RAG translation framework means? I mean, you're calling it RAG, I call it RAG. Do you know what the term RAG stands for? Yes, RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. It's a framework that combines information retrievals from a knowledge base with a language model to improve the quality of generated responses. Is there anything else you would like to discuss? Yeah, on segment eight, I translated translation power that goes beyond translation memories into this translation in Portuguese. Can you give me your critique and evaluation of this translation? Okay, the English phrase, translation power that goes beyond translation memories and glossaries was translated to Forca de Traducao, que vai além de memórias de Traducao e Glossários, in Portuguese. This translation is generally accurate and conveys the meaning of the original text. The words Forca, Traducao, Memórias, and Glossários are all appropriate and accurately translate their respective English words. Also, the phrase que vai além effectively conveys that goes beyond. Is there anything else I can help you with? Yeah, do you have a better way of expressing the same thing? How about capacidade de traducaio que transcende memórias de traducaio glossários? This option uses capacidade for power, which can also mean capacity or capability, suggesting a more nuanced interpretation than for taca. It also uses transcende, which means transcends, which implies that the translation power goes above and beyond translation memories and glossaries. Would you prefer this option? No, I, I like what I have, but thank you. But if I click on augmented actions and I click on alternative suggestions, I'm getting something happening as well. In, in your opinion, what's happening here and how do you like the suggestion that's being uh, put before me? Well, the suggestion to use Poder instead of Forca is explained as being more concise and impactful in Brazilian Portuguese, aligning with the context of translation capabilities. Do you agree with this explanation? I do, I do. And in your opinion, based on everything that you've seen so far, why is it useful for a user to have an interface such as the one that they're seeing here in BureauWorks? Okay, so you want to know why this interface is useful for a user. Based on what I've seen so far, it seems like it is useful because it provides suggestions to help users make more accurate translations while showing context. In addition, the interface also provides a quality review with features such as spell checking and translation consistency. Yeah, but why not just perform this translation in Google Docs, for instance? That's a good question. While Google Docs can perform translations, it may not offer the same level of control and context awareness as this specialized translation interface. 
It seems like this interface is built for professional translators who want a high degree of accuracy and consistency in their work. Do you think the error detection and the additional context is useful? Yeah, I personally love it. And I also wanted to ask you this. I'm going to this other screen in BureauWorks. This is so that people can do different things. What do you think is happening here on this particular screen? Okay, so this screen is showing the status of different translation projects. It appears to be an overview of how different files are progressing with their translations, including the language pair, workflow status, and percentage completed. It also provides some additional details about the overall cost of the project, the due date, and number of total work units. Does this sound right to you? Yeah, that's very accurate. And if we take a look at the platform as a whole, we see projects, we see organizations and organizational units, we see users with different rights and permissions, we see a finance tab that allows people to control payables and receivables, we see context made up of translation memories and glossaries, we see quality management, we see additional tools such as analytics. In your opinion, why do you think working with a platform like this is important compared to being able to just do translations in Google Docs? I understand. Well, based on what I've seen, this platform provides a comprehensive set of tools specifically designed for translation management. It offers functionalities beyond just translations such as project management, user permissions, financial control, translation memory, quality control, and automation. It seems like these additional features would allow professional translation teams to collaborate, maintain high quality, and control the overall process more effectively. Would you say these features are valuable to have? I would, but what do you think about the UI? Can you get it? Is there anything that you would change in it? Okay, so you'd like my opinion on the UI, and if I think there's anything that should be changed. Based on what I see, the UI seems to be designed for professional users with a clean and functional layout that prioritizes data and accessibility. The navigation panel on the left provides access to various sections, and the use of color coding and clear labels make it easy to understand. It's very user-friendly, I think, and there doesn't appear to be anything I would change about it. Do you agree with that? I do. Really, thank you so much for all your comments, and we'll talk soon. You're welcome, and I'm glad I could help. I look forward to talking with you again soon. All right, let's stop sharing. Let's okay. turn off the stream. And if you're not blown away, I don't know what to say. Leave your comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and till next time.